Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe. This is Animal Radio Network. Smell that? <laughs> That's the hazard of having studio cats Woo. with uh, litters. So many cats, and you're supposed to have so many litters per cat. We have four studio cats, so there's four litters, and sometimes the studio stinks. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, right. Blame it on the cat. What a great way to start the show, huh? Hey, listen, today, Betty White will be joining us. The great <laughs> Betty White, golden girl. Also, Joey Turner, the animal communicator, great animal communicator. In fact, if you want to talk to your pet, one 866 405 8405. It's, it's toll lo- free. It's a lot of fun. I did it. And uh, she's also like teaching us. Yeah. Teaching us how to talk with our pets. Also, we're going to find out your dog quotient today. How smart are you about your dog, huh? <laughs> what do you know? If you think you know a lot, we have some big time giveaways, which include the Kong Time Doggy Daycare in a Box, which is a awesome uh, Kong distributor. More on that later. First, let's go to the phones. one 405 8405 Animal Radio. Hello? Yes. Hi, who is this? Uh, my name is Donna Sears. I'm calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Very good. Listening on WEDO, I imagine. I am just delighted to have found your show today. Absolutely <laughs> delighted. Well, good. We're brand new on WEDO, and uh, and uh, we're glad to be there in Pittsburgh, finally. Well, there seems to be such a need. Yeah, there really does. What can we help you with today? Um, I have a 17-year-old Lhasa Opsa who absolutely has been in pristine health. Um, He has dry eye and he has cataracts, so he's not seeing as well as normal. On the beginning of December, um, even though I have pillows strategically placed so he can't get behind or stuck in anywhere, he was stuck behind the toilet in the bathroom for about two hours, and he must have fought like a wild man to get himself (laughs) out of there, which Mm -hmm. he couldn't do. Mm. So um, we've reached the point at the vets that I've had his back, legs, and spine x-rayed, and they tell me that he has arthritis very bad from the back end to the legs back. Mm. Other than that, forward, the vet says he's in perfect condition. How's he feeling? Um, he's eating, he's drinking, he, he's a strong boy, he was the pick of the litter, he's uh, 26 pounds and not overweight, he um, wants to walk, he mm-hmm. tries for three hours sometimes till he just is so tired, he mm. just can't go on anymore for until the next, till he takes a rest and then here we go again. What's his name? His name is Shanghai. Shanghai. <laughs> what an appropriate name. Well, here's the deal. I, we've done a little bit of research here. In fact, Judy's looking it up right now. She's going to give you some information on making Shanghai a little more mobile. Uh, I would be delighted. I would even like to know if there is somewhere on um, perhaps even the wheels with the back end. Or it's almost like a doggy wheelchair. What, what I, did you find out, Judy? Didn't you find out something from uh, Handicap yes. Pets? What, what's the deal? Yes, there's a website called Handicap Pets. Pets.com. Good friend of ours, by the way. Yes, and he's, he's got all kinds of information on uh, holistic treatment and things you can do to make your pet comfortable. And he also has a variety of different types of carts. Uh, there are carts for a dog who is paralyzed in the front. There are carts for dogs who are paralyzed in the back. And sometimes these carts can get expensive, so I believe mm-hmm. he has used carts, too. <gasps> You're yes. kidding, because I found out that they were close to $300 plus shipment. Well, yeah. And, and when I was there today at the vet, she did a blood test. She says, we could try, and I, I'm not going to say this right, um, Protozac. Prednisone? Prednisone. It's a steroid, yes. And she said she has had a lot of luck with it. Mm -hmm. And um, he's the type of animal, holistically, he's never even been dipped. Mm. Because Uh I was concerned about later in life problems with his liver or, you know. Prednisone is not uh, not holistic, though. It is a steroid. But this is all that she has to offer me at this point. She says this could be an alternative. She's had very good results with it. And um, since he's so healthy otherwise and continues to fight, I just feel as though then it's up to me to continue to fight, too. Mm -hmm. Even though we're up day and night. Going back to the cards, uh, this HandicappedPets.com also rents cards. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be a shorter term, it's a little bit less expensive than actually purchasing one. 
So you can also rent one on a monthly basis from them. They will provide it for you as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You, see, I, you know, I called in Animal Friends and left a message here. And um, I had gone through the Animal Rescue League, and nobody seemed to have gotten back to me with any like real information well you're not alone there's lots of people in fact uh, i don't know if you've ever heard willie 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 who is uh, willie. on the show all the time with his guardian has no back legs goes around from school to school on his cart giving inspirational teachings uh, oh, to kids wonderful i find so i'm a teacher without a job here in pittsburgh i'm mm. back here with an older mom and an older dog now <laughs> and yeah and um you know there's pretty plenty of substitute work but somebody that has three college degrees and experience in all my fields. Well, what would you like to teach? Um, I'm an artist at heart. Okay. If you're if you're listening in the Pittsburgh area and you're looking for a good teacher, <laughs> I think you just heard one of the best interviews uh, for a job that that could be right there. Oh, that's you funny. Well, Donna, uh, I'd like to give you the name of two holistic veterinarians in Pennsylvania that will do phone com- or consultations with you. Free of charge, right? I'm not sure. There might be a charge. I don't know, but they do do long distance phone consultations. You can call them. At least they're in Pennsylvania. Okay, we'll give you those numbers off okay. the air. Okay. Oh, I'll be delighted. We'll, we'll also send. Shanghai some goodies too, okay? We'll go Aww. into the prize closet and pull out some good stuff for Shanghai. I'm uh, looking for some prayers right now. I'm going to send my prayers too, okay? Oh, I can't and thank you enough. We are also having a special coming up on, uh, is it February 11th? February 11th. In a few weeks on aging pets and how to help your aging pets. So check that out on WEDO right there in Pittsburgh. And you're saying it's February 11th? It'll be on February 11th, Saturday, February 11th, live in Pittsburgh. And you'll be able to call live and ask questions, too. Oh. Okay? All right. And like I think, I think a lot of other people are at the same point with their older mm-hmm. animals. And it's like, what to do? Well, animals yeah. are living longer these days, just like people are. Yep. you got to take care of them. Hold on one second, Donna. Okay, are you ready to find out how smart you are, your dog quotient? Somebody's going to win big right now. A Kong time doggy daycare in the wow. box. Hi, who's this? Oh, this is Dana from Pittsburgh. Hi, Dana. How you doing? I'm doing great. Are you ready to find out your dog quotient? I sure am. You're going to find out how smart you are. Do you have <laughs> any dogs? I do. What what kind of dogs do you have? I've got a little Muttley. His name is Roscoe. Roscoe, the little Muttley. Okay. Yep. How long have you had Roscoe? About two and a half years. Okay, well, Roscoe is going to make out if uh, <laughs> oh, you... Oh, boy. Let me tell you, we've gone in the prize closet. We pulled, We started with one of these Kong Time doggy daycare in the boxes. This is one of these awesome wow. uh, Kong automatic dispensers. Pretty expensive, too. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And that's just good. That's just going to be on the top. Oh, we'll, right. we'll We'll fill it up. It'll be a big old care package. <laughs> Perfect. Depending on your dog quotient, of course. Yes. Of course. First... Of course. First question, I believe there's five questions today. They're multiple choice. One of them is the correct answer. Uh, pick the correct answer. And uh, it's, you've done it before, I'm sure. I'm, I'm good. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. This is the test. Well, you're heading to your, heading to your veterinarian, and you get there, and he says you need a tighter test, a tighter test for your dog. Does that mean, A, your dog has kidney stones, B, is immune to a virus, or E, needs many, many more very expensive tests. Your dog takes a tighter test. Does he have I'm kidney stones? That he has kidney stones? Uh-huh. No, unfortunately, that uh, is incorrect. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Not, not a good way to start. Actually, a tighter test assesses antibodies to a virus, so it can tell uh, whether or not you need a vaccine or not. Yeah, you know how your dog needs, they say your dog needs annual vaccinations. If you do a tighter test, it'll tell you which ones your dog actually needs. Your dog may be able to go another year or so if the titer shows oh. that he's already carrying the antibodies, so he doesn't have to do them yearly. Okay. That's a good idea for people who get stray dogs yeah. because yeah, they it, would know what shots they had. Yeah, wow. That's exactly correct. And sometimes uh, vaccines last longer than others. You know, uh, so it's, so it's, Vets it, make money when they tell you to come back every year. Yes, they do. In <laughs> fact, that, that, has to do with the next, that has to do with the next question. Okay. Question number two, you've just received that notice from your veterinarian that it's time for your dog's annual booster shots for parvovirus and distemper virus. You should, A, get the shots right away. Your dog's health is at stake. B, procrastinate until the guilt overwhelms you. That's usually what I pick. Or C, (laughs) 
Presume your dog's immune for life, but test her just to make sure. Would it be A, B, or C? A, go get them. B, now wait till you feel guilty. Or C, take a tighter test and find out. I'm going with C. That is correct. Yay! Take a Very good. <laughs> Thinking about your dog's food again. I don't know what you get your dog, but commercial dog food may not legally contain. Any commercial dog food may not legally contain A, roadkill or zoo animals, B, preservatives banned in human food, or C, dying or diseased animals. Commercial dog food, the dog food that you get in the the supermarket. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with C. Dying or diseased animals. Well, you know what? None of those are illegal in dog food. They can dog food can contain all, all those. of those. And would you believe would you believe that there are some that do? So that is why it is so important to use a, a good dog food, perhaps not purchased in a supermarket. Dana, which statement is false? Male dogs that have been neutered are A are less likely to run away, B can be fitted with prosthetics so they don't look so strange, or C never forgive their humans. <laughs> You neuter your dog. Is he less likely to run away? Can he be fitted with prosthetics so that he doesn't look strange? Or C, never forgives their humans. Which one of those is false when you neuter a dog? Well, B and C are a whole lot more funny, but I'm going to go with A. (laughs) Yes, they are less likely to run away. They also are protected against testicular cancer, prostate cancer. And I, I believe you can actually have them fitted with uh, with the... Uh, Nudicles. Nudicles? Is that what it is? <laughs> so your dog, yeah, doesn't. he's not embarrassed when he goes out in your neighborhood or to the dog park. He looks very manly. <laughs> well, very good. You have a great dog quotient. Yes. And we're going to hook you up with an awesome package, including Calm Times Doggy Daycare, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. Hold on one second, Dana. one 405 8405 are you ready? We're going to call Betty White right now, who's uh, got to put in the pin code there and the zip code. How long can I work this bit? I did this last week with Cesar Milan. The code rack, code on blue, some extra numbers just for good measure, calling Betty White the Golden Girls on Animal Radio. Oh, boy. Hello. Hello. Hi, Judy. Hi, Betty. How are you? I'm fine, but I can hardly hear you, darling. I'll try to speak up. There we go. Okay, I have Hal Abrams here with us also. I was wondering if you were going to introduce me. (laughs) And I didn't hear your first name, honey. My name is Hal. Hal. Well, hi, Hal. It's Betty. Nice to talk to both of you. Well, you too. Very nice to talk to you, of course, uh, the great actress, but... Not, oh, not and a lot. I got you fooled. <laughs> well, hey, listen, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> right. Uh, but you're also a big animal lover, too. Well, that's my real work. I mean, uh, show business is my hobby, but my real work is animals. Oh, okay. So tell us how. Well, I, I, I love them dearly, of course, but I've been with the Morris Animal Foundation for 37 years. We're wow. a health organization. Uh, it's, an, it's a health organization? What is it? Tell us a little bit about Morris. Morris Animal Foundation, uh, we're headquartered in uh, Denver, mm-hmm. and we're an international organization. We fund humane studies into specific health problems of dogs, cats, horses, and zoo and wildlife. And it, it's, we've done, we helped develop the Parvo virus vaccine for dogs and the feline leukemia vaccine for cats and that kind of thing. So it's a wonderful organization. It was started oh, 50 years ago by a veterinarian because there was, there was no, no government uh, organization or money for our pet animals. There were for food animals, mm-hmm. but not for pet animals, mm-hmm. for their health. So it's it's grown into an international, wonderful organization, and I'm really proud of it. <laughs> and you're also uh, a part of the SPCA LA, is that yes, correct? Yes, I do their telethon every year, and I work with them. I've worked with them for for all these years, and I've worked with the LA Zoo for 36 years. Uh, and I'm a zoo commissioner, so wow. my, my real world work is animals. What What do you do as a zoo commissioner? Uh, well, we we worked. I was on the board for all the years that we tried so hard to get our own zoo commission. We were working out of park and recreation, 
and the golf courses and the highways and all those, and then the zoo was way down at the bottom somewhere. So we finally got our own zoo commission about uh, eight years ago. Very so good. Animals have been all of your life. That's right. Uh huh. And now we get we have a direct line to the city council and the, the the mayor's office and all that to help us as much as possible with the zoo. Oh, that's great. What well, do you remember your first animal? The first animal that you made that connection with. Well, I guess it was before I remember, because when my folks brought me home from the hospital, uh, we had Toby, a marmalade cat, mm-hmm. who was... Uh, uh, what, what kind of leg? Monoleg? Marmalade? An orange cat. Oh, okay. They call them marmalades. Okay. And uh, the, Toby would sit on the corner of my crib, and my mother always said, if Toby hadn't approved of the new baby, she would have sent me right back to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so I come by my animal love naturally. Did you have kind of a reverse role as a child? Instead of you bringing home pets and asking your parents if you could keep them because they followed you home, your parents did these, did that thing? That was it. They'd say, oh, Betty, he followed us home. Can we keep him? So, of course, I was in hog heaven. We all just loved him. Well, that's great to, to have an environment be brought up, and your parents encourage that uh, environment with animals. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an, anything with a leg on each corner. I don't care what it is. <laughs> But I'm, I'm a big kitty person. Uh-huh. I, my bobcat. I just lost my bobcat. I'm about sorry. A month ago, and he was uh, he was about 18, and uh, he well, was that's... a foundling, so I didn't know his exact age. But he uh-huh. was a beautiful Himalayan who was such a people cat. Sounds like he lived a, a very long life too. Yes. Very good. Well, any other animals at home? Yes, I have a. They're looking at me. I have a golden <laughs> retriever. He was puppy raised in Alaska to be a guide dog. Wow. But he his hips didn't quite measure up, so he went into career change. <laughs> and uh, so he's 10 now, and his name is Kita, K-I-T-T-A. Uh-huh. Wonderful. Because in Inuit, Kita means forward. Oh. And then I have my little old girl here, my little Shih Tzu, uh-huh. Panda. She's a black and white Shih Tzu who will be 15 in September. Wow. I talk to my pets a lot. Do you think I should be embarrassed about that, Betty? I think you should be embarrassed for apologizing for it. <laughs> that, that, Believe me, I, of course, I talk to all animals, but, but the, the pets, they may not know the exact words, but they read you so completely, your tone of voice, your, your body language and all that. And you just deal them into the into the family and and deal them into the conversation. It's amazing the results you get. Well, I we actually have a, a cat that actually runs the radio show. And oh, really? What what kind? A black and white tuxedo cat. Oh, I love tuxedos. <laughs> he's uh, he he watches us all the time and makes sure, he's making sure that we're working and and doing everything properly. And of course, if any city officials or government officials come by, uh, we refer them directly uh, to Boog. To Boog is oh, his well, name. Of What's his name? Boog. Boog? Oh, well, but please give him my love. I will. Now, let me ask you this question before we let you go here. I, I know that you're a wonderful actress and animal lover, but I just realized you're also the author of four books. Yep. And I had a wonderful time. I love writing. And I've, I've, someday I'll get back to I've got number five started, but someday I'll get back to it, but not right now. Are these animal books? Uh, well, the first one was Pet Love, oh. and how pets take care of us. They were therapy animals, you know, not only guide dogs, but hearing ear dogs and, and hospice cats and all that. So that was Pet Love. And then... Uh, the next one was uh, Betty White in Person, which was a series of how I feel about old grief and marriage and and love and all that sort of thing, kind of essays. And uh, mm-hmm. then the third one was The Leading Lady, who was my beloved Dinah. She was a golden retriever guide dog that when she retired as a guide dog, she belonged to my best friend. And, of course, he was going to keep her when he got his new guide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she just went, to, she couldn't face, a, 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 oh. she lost her master, she lost her job, and she just went under the bed and wouldn't eat or anything. So I said, let me try her, Tom. And uh, so she came to me and had a whole new job. She had my housekeeper to break in <laughs> and the mailman and the UPS man and the pool man. So... Uh, Tom and I wrote the book. We didn't write it together. He wrote his chapters on his early life with Dinah. He was a special correspondent for uh, Good Morning America. Mm -hmm. And he used to travel all over the country 
with just Dinah, and she would take him all over. Aww. So he wrote his chapters about the young Dinah, and I wrote mine about how her wonderful transition into this new life. And she came to me when she was 11, and she made 15 by three oh. days. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so Tom always said he took the, she taught him how to grow up and me how to grow old. Aww. And then the last one uh, was Betty White in person, which, I mean, uh, here we go again, which is kind of my, my television career from <laughs> scratch. Wait, is there, is, I'm wondering, is there anything we should be looking for uh, on the horizon uh, in, in not just television career, but maybe something that you're doing with Morris Animal, uh, any kind of events we should be looking for? Well, the uh, Morris Animal, I, I go to Denver for, for uh, board meetings and executive committee meetings six times a year, but I have a recurring role on uh, Boston Legal that I'm oh. having a wonderful time with. Very good. And we go back to work. Uh, we've been on hiatus now, but we got picked up for 22 episodes for the new season, and I'm thrilled we go back to work in about a week. Well, Congratulations. another good reason to watch the program. We'll look for you. Okay. I'm a rotten lady, but I'm having a very good time. Oh, I bet you I bet you play such a good rotten lady, don't you? <laughs> it's fun. I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine you as a rotten lady at all, but I'll check it out on TV. Okay. You are a wonderful person. Thanks for everything that you've done for the animals. And before we leave, uh, any words of wisdom that you'd love to give the listeners about their animals or about animals in general? Yes, just just enjoy each and every day. Their roads are shorter than ours, so make the most of every day that you're together and also be, be, be responsible for your own animals and then we wouldn't have an animal problem. Yes. If everybody took their own responsibility and dealt that, that pet into the family and, and uh, considered everybody else, even the people who aren't as animal-oriented as we are, they, you, if you don't take your responsibility, you turn animal moderates into animal haters, and you don't want to do that. No, you no. sure don't. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for the work you both do. Thank you, Hal, and thank you, Judy. Thank but- you, Betty. Talk With Your Animals is brought to you by Get Serious. Remove stains, odors, and pheromones in three minutes with Get Serious. And you can even microwave Get Serious for stubborn and old stains that you weren't able to get out before. Available at PetSmart and online at GetSeriousProducts.com. Hi, Joy. Hello, Hal. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Always my favorite part of the show when we speak to Joy Turner, an animal communicator who's taught me so much. I'm actually learning yes. every week a little more. Eventually, learning. we'll be able to do it. Absolutely. I have on the phone. Who do I have on the phone? Marilyn? Yes. Hi, Marilyn. Where are you calling from? South Lake Tahoe, California. Listening on KOWL, I imagine. Right. Uh, okay, you're on with Joy. Go ahead. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. Um, I don't know how much background you want on... Uh, I'd like the, to start out knowing what the species and the name of the animal that we'll be speaking with is. Okay. She's a uh, wire hair fox terrier. Might have a little poodle in her. Okay. And her name is Molly. Okay. And give me enough background so that my mind understands the question. Okay. So I can phrase it correctly to her. I got it. I got her five years ago from a uh, animal shelter and at the time she had very bad heart condition and since then I've learned she's had other problems and now um, it seems she's developing very severe arthritis and she's on all kinds of medication already I don't want to add more prescription medication that's going to interfere with other things. She's got chronic hepatitis and pancreatitis, and her kidneys are not in good condition. And though I've, so I've been feeding her herbal stuff, glucosamine and some other herbal things to try and help, and it helps some, but not much. My main concern is whether she's in pain. I don't want to, I, I have no intention of putting her to sleep but I want to be sure that whatever time she's got left, that she's comfortable and happy. Okay. And here's what Molly wants you to know. She absolutely idolizes you for being willing to put so much effort into her care and her well-being. She just cannot even begin to thank you enough for everything you're doing for her. And she just absolutely loves the things that you're doing. She loves that you love her that much that you would go to all this length 
mm-hmm. to take care of her. Oh. Um, and she thinks that she would like to continue doing that for as long as her body possibly can hold out because she loves receiving that much love. And when you asked about pain, what she told me is that her body certainly feels differently than it used to feel. And she's not actually interpreting any of that as pain. She's interpreting different varying levels of discomfort, Mm -hmm. but not actual pain. Does that make sense? Uh, Yes. Yes, it does. And she wants me to explain a little bit to you why that is. And I've heard this from a number, quite a large number, actually, of other animals as well. Essentially, pain, they tell me, is a function of our judgment. And if they're not judging the sensations that their bodies are having, they pretty much always interpret it as some kinds of discomfort, but not pain. It has to get really extreme for a lot of animals to consider that they have pain. Well, I'm glad it hasn't gotten to that point. The discomfort, does that keep her from doing things she wants to do or feels she would like to do? Or it, well, She I, says in, in a way and some things, but not enough that she's concerned about it. That's good to know. She thinks that she can quite easily make adjustments to the way her body adapts and changes. So that even though maybe there are things she can't do now that she could before, she still thinks that she's having a wonderful and marvelous life. And primarily that's because of her interpretation of all the love that it takes from you to help her do all these different things that you're doing. Oh, that is so encouraging to hear because I was so concerned that she was not happy. No, she says she gets days when she's a little grumpy and she's sorry about that, but... She thinks maybe you can understand that. Yes. And she's again saying how much she loves the fact that you love her so much to do all these things for her. Oh, that does my heart good to know this, and it makes me feel really good about it. And, uh, well, we'll just continue. She's such a sweet dog. I don't know why. She thinks you give her so far much greater love than the others ever did. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. So she thinks she kind of went to heaven before she even had to pass on. Oh, that's so good to know. She's a very lucky, lucky dog. I'm a very, very lucky person to have found her, I tell you, because she has been the joy of my life for the past five years. And she wants you to know she thinks the same of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Okay, we're going to need to take a break, so I could, I'm a little verklempt. <laughs> take a quick break. Uh, Joy, if someone wants to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Two ways, through my website at www.talkwithyouranimals.com or by calling me at 425-867-1779. And I do private sessions all week long if people want to have private conversations. And, of course, you can hear Joy Turner every weeknight on Animal Radio's full-time channel at AnimalRadio.com. And if you want to talk to her next week, 1-866-405-8405. Joy, we will talk with you later. Thanks, Al. Marilyn, thank you so much for your call. Have a great day. Thank you. I'm sure by now you've heard me talk about our studio cats here at Animal Radio. And anyone who has cats knows that they leave those little hairball presents behind for you all over your carpets. You can get the hairballs up, but what do you do about those stains? Well, I tried every product available in the grocery store and nothing worked. I removed the hairballs, but the stains were always left behind. Then I tried Get Serious. Wow, what a difference. Not only did Get Serious remove the new stains, but it removed the old stains too. And if you have those really tough old locked-in stains, all you have to do is just warm Get Serious in your microwave before applying. Get Serious not only removes the stains, but it removes odors and pheromones as well, all in under three minutes. And it's inexpensive. Get Serious saved my carpets and is personally endorsed by me, Judy, from Animal Radio. You can find Get Serious at PetSmart and in other pet stores all over. Visit their website at GetSeriousProducts.com. Time has flown. we got to go. Remember, there's lots more at AnimalRadio.com, including 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Spay and neuter. And don't declaw. And don't go to a breeder, okay? <laughs> go to a breed rescue online if you want a certain breed. We'll see you next week right here for more Animal Radio. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Animal Radio.
Network. Network.